Hello, welcome. We are here with Chris Funk, who is the Executive Director for Center for People in Need. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. And it's always good to be speaking to uh, the Unitarian Church members, uh, some of our greatest supporters uh, through the years of many things I've been involved with. So I'm, it, I feel like I'm right at home. I um, appreciate you inviting us again to speak about the center and what we're doing. Um, the mission of the center has in the last few years been a little bit more refined and we are uh, really trying to focus in two areas uh, for low income people, basic needs and providing services and programs that can help people become more economically independent. We have several programs um, that work within education. We have a trade program that works with people who are coming out of corrections and helping them with employment training and also just job skill searching and working also with employers to accept people uh, with prison records. We have um, an English language learning classes which have uh, gone down a bit in the, in the few years that uh, Donald Trump was in office and immigration really <clears throat> came almost to a halt here in Lincoln, mm -hmm. but we're expecting that to pick up again. And we still do have um, classes, uh, but not nearly as many people. Um, and we're also, we had prior to the pandemic been working in uh, going into employment sites and actually running classes. Um, our focus for ELL is uh, on employment and many people do get hired at maybe a third level of English on a five point scale, which is enough maybe to get a job, but maybe not enough to really thrive inside a, a work site. So several businesses have reached out to us and asked us to come in and, and help them. And that's, I hope we'll start in again. And then we have our uh, POP program, People Obtaining Prosperity. And that's, a that's funded by two private found family foundations. And it pays for low-income people who qualify for federal tuition assistance for, to, um, it pays for their entire tuition to Southeast Community College. Federal monies only pay for half. And uh, then we have wraparound services helping with books and internet and uh, transportation and things like that. And it's very successful. So those are our education programs and training programs at this point um, to help people out of poverty. And our basic needs programs are really food and diapers. And that's really where we've been doing much of our work this last year mm -hmm. because of the pandemic. Um, the, uh, when the pandemic hit, we moved all of our food and diaper distribution out to the parking lot. We uh, started bagging the food and then putting it in cars as people drove through as a way to you know, safely uh, distribute food. That way, unfortunately, people didn't have a choice of what they were getting, but at least they were getting some, some food. And our numbers uh, increased 71% over the year before. And these are household numbers. So we went this last year, we saw uh, almost 6,000 separate families that came through. Um, some of them, they could, they could come through once a week. Um, many came maybe twice a month. So it wasn't always a weekly uh, uh, attendance, but it's made a, I know a huge difference in, in people's lives. And the food bank was able to provide us with more food. And the USDA really stepped up and uh, provided more food as well. So it's been quite a, I would say, a successful effort. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of, Jean, I guess my main talk. <laughs> I don't know, overview okay. of how things are. Is that, yeah. is that yeah, a, great? I don't know. Yeah, that's great. You've that's covered a lot of bases, and I was curious about. Um, what has changed the most and you really covered that i i was aware of the food distribution um i have some folks i know that have been taking advantage of that and you're right it has made a huge difference in people's lives mm -hmm. um i guess uh i just have a few questions for you though um before we before we take off but one question is um how long have you been with set the center I started in uh, October of 2016 in an administrative 
role and I became the executive director in, I think it was June of 2018. Okay. So not all that long. So you had only been the director for a couple of years before the pandemic hit, mm -hmm. but right. enough to enough to not be a complete newbie at that point. That's good. Right, right. <laughs> and, you know, I think the thing that, <clears throat> that we're just fortunate is that we had the facility to manage this huge undertaking. You know, sure. had we been a small food pantry or if we didn't have a drive through system, you know, way that people could drive through, I'm not sure what we would have done. You know, it would have been very, a very different challenge. Right. Um, um, are there, so one of the things I always ask folks um, when we're doing these interviews is, we, you know, of course, the one of the goals of the Share the Plate program is to raise some money for mm -hmm. you. Um, but are there other ways also that our members and friends could help the center? Are there ways to volunteer as things open back up? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. You know, we really did cut back on volunteers uh, almost to zero, really, when the pandemic hit. But um, now we are thinking about how we can change that. And uh, I think in the next few months, we will be uh, looking at ways that people can volunteer. And again, it'll be safety, looking for people who've been vaccinated, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but um, one another way actually is through, and I know the Unitarian Church is great at this, is advocacy. Mm -hmm. And there is a bill in the legislature this year, LB 109, that, um, excuse me, 108, it's uh, been around for years. Senator McAllister has brought it forward uh, every year for for several years this year he's made it his priority it's on snap on mm -hmm. uh, it's increasing the income initial income eligibility uh, the federal government allows states to bring people in based on income anywhere from 130 percent to 200 percent of the federal poverty guidelines they still have to be able to have enough deductions to get down to 100 percent of poverty regardless of where they enter but Nebraska only lets people enter at 130%. So what that means, they call it the cliff effect. If they get a slight increase in wages, mm -hmm. they can lose their SNAP and it's much more, they lose a lot more than they gain with the um, um, wage increase. So right. this would bring it back up to 180% of poverty. And um, we're, you know, I'm glad he's made it his priority bill. It just, it's, it's uh, just got to, was determined this week that that would be his priority. So we'll be working on that. And, you know- With the advocacy um, that you were talking about too, would, if people signed up for that, would they then just get action alerts? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, might get that a, would be great. might get put in our newsletter list too, but um, I'm, actually I probably would put them on the newsletter list, but- um, Okay. So uh, is there any- the, really the last question, you, you answered most of my questions, <laughs> um, but the last question I can think of is, is there something that is coming up that you would like our members and friends to know about, um, or is it too soon to really be able to plan for later in the year? Well, we're hoping, you know, we're really planning by the fourth quarter that we should be able, hope, unless something really changes with this pandemic, that we can be having a lot more volunteers. We can be bringing people back inside. Okay. Food and diapers. Yeah, that, but there, there will be other um, uh, opportunities, I think, with, uh, well, that's, we're, we're going to look at different ways that we can be more efficient in food. One of the challenges we have is that we really don't know how many people, you know, with a 71% increase, uh, we're going to see obviously a drop this year, but we don't know how much and we don't know mm -hmm. by next year. Um, so that's part of our challenge in, think, in trying to figure out how we're going to do distributions, you know, sure. how many people we're dealing with. We've even taught, we were going to look at it at a grocery store model, but <clears throat> that's pretty involved and, and mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, down the road. Uh, the other thing that we're doing that I really didn't highlight much, I, I mentioned diapers, but we're actually uh, have worked with the Junior League of Lincoln to create a diaper bank. And, uh, and it's just in its beginning stages and it's the Junior League of Lincoln Diaper Bank, but it's housed at the Center for People in Need. We're administering okay. it. They're helping raise money for diapers and raising um, 
like doing diaper drives. We're also raising money for diapers. But uh, the idea is that we will have, we will work with other nonprofits in Lincoln. We can buy the, these diapers at really good prices. Mm -hmm. They can be members of the bank and then receive diapers through the bank. Um, it, it, other agencies. Other agencies. So we're starting Great. out just with community action and the center. And we're the two that are getting this started basically. Mm -hmm. And then our hope is that we will be successful enough in getting enough diapers that we can invite more agencies in, you know, city mission, uh, Salvation Army, whoever, sure. whatever agencies. And there can be different levels of membership in terms of based on how many diapers they think they they need. That's um, great. Yeah, there so, is a huge need for that as well. You're right, there and, is. and it, it's interesting that food and diapers ended up being the you know the top end of mm -hmm. what you're yeah. providing. But it makes sense, mm -hmm. basic needs. Well, I really appreciate you your time today. Um, oh, you're we, welcome. Appreciate we, you and all that you do, and that you your the good work of the Unitarian Church. Thank you. We will um, amplify these issues and um, look forward to seeing you in person one of these okay, days. Okay, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Have Thanks, a wonderful Katie. day. Okay, you too. Bye-bye.